recitation of salawat and salam upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has another benefit. Al-Imam Ahmad Zarruq, rahimahullah ta'ala, the author of Qawaidu Tasawwuf, and the author of many uh, beneficial works like Uddatul Muridi Sadiq, a book in Tasawwuf, he mentions that he met some of the Arifin Billah, those who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Mecca al mukarrama and they said to him that in Akhiru Zaman, in the end of times, finding a Shaykh, a Shaykh al Murabbi. What is a Shaykh al Murabbi? The Shaykh who nurtures the people, the person who raises a generation of people. Like a Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, Quddisa Sirru al Aziz, who passed away in the year 561. What type of generation of people did he raise? The likes of Ibn Qudam al Maqdasi, the author of Al Mughni, who was one of the last students of Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, Rahimallah Ta'ala. He states that he was studying Mukhtasar al Khiraqi in the Hanbali school when Al Imam Abdul Qadir al Jilani, Rahimallah Ta'ala, passed away. He was still teaching at the age of 90. Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani. Rahimallah Ta'ala, books of fiqh, jurisprudence. Mukhtasar al Khiraqi. And then Ibn Qudam al Maqtasi, the major jurist of the Hanbali school, the author of Al Mughni, was he, one of his last students. Al Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, Rahimallah Ta'ala, raised a generation of Mujahideen. Who were those Mujahideen? The generation of Salahuddin al Ayyubi, Rahimallah Ta'ala. Because when a Sultan Nuruddin Zangi Rahimallah Ta'ala was the Sultan of Greater Bilad Sham and parts of Iraq, Mosul in Iraq, a Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani Rahimallah Ta'ala was in Baghdad. In the year 561, a Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani Rahimallah Ta'ala passed away. A Sultan Nuruddin Zangi Rahimallah was the Sultan at that time. That generation that he nurtured was the real people of Tasawwuf. So today when people claim Tasawwuf, their Tasawwuf will only be known by their works. If they have not raised a generation of Fuqaha jurists, a generation of Ahlul Ilm, people of knowledge, and a generation of Jihad, like the time of Sultan Nuruddin Zangi, then it's an empty claim. So in the end of times, finding someone like Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani would be difficult for people. There are awliya Allah in every time. In our generation, there are many awliya Allah, salihun. But finding a Sheikh Al Murabi is different. A person who will nurture you, the way a cat nurtures its kittens, nurtures you to become a whole human being, Al Insan Al Kamil. A human being who embodies the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This will will become impossible in Akhirul Zaman, very difficult. So what did the Arifin they said that a salawat was salam will be the Murabbi Shaykh of the people in the end of times. This is conditional. What is it conditional upon? Mashrut. It is conditional that the person follows the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So someone who learns something like the Bayan wa Aqeedati Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which is which book? The Mukhtasar of Al-Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi in Aqeedah. And he learns a book in fiqh, like Al-Quduri, with the Shaykh, with the teacher. And then if he attempts to find a Murabbi Shaykh, it's good. But if he does not come across a real shaykh, then he recites salawat and salam upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in abundance. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will guide him. Someone may say, how can Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guide him? This is what makes the difference between us and others.
that we ahl sunnati wal jama'a believe every believer has a link with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam today that when a believer recites salawat and salam upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam firstly he may see rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a dream but generally the arifin they mention when you see rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a dream never mention it to anyone there are people who start discussing their dreams never mention your dreams to anyone because then the dreams will stop do not make that mistake secondly those who see rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a wakeful state they are those people that if their private life was exposed they would not be embarrassed meaning they are awliya themselves so visions in a wakeful state a real arif billah he is such a person that his private life is similar or better than his public life but in this day and age people should not even mention the visions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this day and age because there are false people who utilize dreams and visions to misguide people so visions and dreams are not a proof for other people they are a proof for the individual but he must keep them private like for instance you have people they misuse visions and dreams they can misuse visions and dreams they can also misuse relics like for instance you have people they misuse visions and dreams they can misuse visions and dreams they can also misuse relics we do tabarruk with the relics of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if someone has a hair of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we seek blessings from it this is permissible in al islam but there are people who will make forgeries they will make forgeries so how do we differentiate between the real people and the false people the answer is someone who has a vision of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this day and age they will not divulge that vision in public as for the relics in the time of sultan abdul hamid athani rahimallah the last khalifa more or less who passed away in 1918 in his time there were many people who claimed to have the relics the hair of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is problematic why because when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to jirana and had the blessed hair shaved he distributed the hair to the companions alayhim ridwan most of the companions they buried themselves with the hair so most of the hair went into the graves of the sahaba as sahabatul kiram alayhim ridwan some of the hair was preserved some of them kept the hair and they passed it down from generation to generation So a Sultan Abdul Hamid Athani rahimallahu ta'ala he wrote a letter to the Mufti the Shaykh al Islam of the Dawlat al Uthmaniyya the Caliphate the Mufti rahimallah he said anyone claiming to have the hair of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they should bring the hair to the the awqaf the public endowments of the Khilafah if the hair has a shadow then it is not a hair of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not have a shadow so when the hairs were brought they dismissed all the hairs that had a shadow and they said those are forgeries and they gave certificates to everyone who had the hairs of which had no shadow and some of these hairs have asanid muttasila connected chains back to the sahabi but in our day and age there are many people who claim they have the relics but they need connected chains they need what chains but if they claim to have a hair of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the hair cannot have a shadow why because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not have a shadow some of the the wahhabis will say 
how can you claim that the Prophet ﷺ did not have a shadow? The answer is, many ulama, they mention this. You check Abdul Rahman bin al Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala, for instance, he mentions this, that Rasulullah ﷺ did not have a shadow. This was not an invented belief of uh, Ahmad Ridha Khan, rahimahullah ta'ala. He didn't make up this belief. This was found in earlier generations to the point of Muhammad Awama, Sheikh Muhammad Awama, in his ta'liqat, his notes on Ash-Shama'ilul Muhammadiyah, he makes reference to the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not have a shadow. Why I mention Sheikh Muhammad Awama is because many of the Diobandi ulama, they have high reverence for Sheikh Muhammad Awama as a great scholar of a hadith. And Sheikh Muhammad Awama in his ta'liqat, in his notes on Shama'il Muhammadiyah, he mentions this, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not have a shadow. So his blessed hair does not have a shadow.